wonderful in here. Let us fill our hearts with the light of the Holy Spirit and sing, Come, Come, Everybody Worship, number 2271, In the Faith We Sing. This will definitely warm us up and wake us up this morning. Right, Lauren? Yes. Okay. <laughs> generous landowner paid all of them a denarius, the daily wage. God, God provides an unexpected grace. God provides each day enough for the day. We respond by gathering and harvesting what God provides. Come, now is the time to worship. We come, come to worship as the Lord of God, who faithfully, faithfully provides our daily bread every day. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's take a moment to gather our thoughts, move our hearts closer to the Holy Spirit. And be in an attitude of prayer. Holy 
Holy God, we know that your kingdom is available to anyone who decides to give up their own selfish desires and turn to you. Whether we turn to you as tiny children and are faithful for a lifetime or live apart as rebellious teens and adults, returning to you just a short time before the end, you welcome us and give us the same heavenly gifts, the same life everlasting. For that, Lord, we are so thankful. We thank you, Lord, that this day, today, we have heard your call and are here to worship you. Open our ears to hear your word and your message for us. Amen. chapter 16, verses 16 through 34. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a female slave who had a spirit of divination and brought her own owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. By she followed Paul and us, she cried out, These men are slaves of the Most Highest God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. But when her owner saw that there was their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragging them into the market before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrate, they said, these men, these Jews, are disturbing our city and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us, being Romans, to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrate held them, had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them secure. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet to the socks. And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer awoke, and saw the prisoner's doors wide open. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he was supposed, supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are here. The jailer called for lights and rushed in. He fell down trembling before Paul and Silas, then brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his home. At the, at the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his family were baptized without delay. He brought them into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 105 on page 828. The um, responsive tune is a little unusual, so we'll ask Warren to play it through, and then we'll sing it and then read the verses responsibly and then sing it at the end. We're only reading one through six. Page 828, please stand as you're able. 
So play the whole thing through for us once more. sent them into his vineyard. When he went about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here, idle, all day? They said to him, no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers, give them their pay, beginning with the last, and then go into the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage, a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, he's last worked one hour, one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The word of God for all to hear. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, I can tell you that I'm glad that I am not a laborer in a vineyard this morning. <laughs> because it's really pouring out there. So this morning, both of our readings are about faith and also money. What do these images of the kingdom of God presented by Jesus and the incident with Paul and Silas and the jailer say to us. So in Acts, there's a female slave with a spirit of divination. Michelle read this great story to us. Very good, Michelle. Well done. 
So this woman with the spirit of divination can see into the future. She proclaims that Paul and Silas are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim the way of salvation. And she proclaims it, and proclaims it, and proclaims it again, and Paul gets annoyed and says, go away in the name of Jesus Christ. He casts out the spirit. Well, her owner is quite upset about this because he was planning to get rich using this spirit of divination. The owner doesn't pay any attention to the woman's proclamation that Paul and Silas proclaim the way to salvation. He doesn't pay any attention to that. He only cares about the lost opportunity for wealth. So he has Paul and Silas stripped, beaten, and thrown in jail. And during the night, they're singing and praying. All the jail, the people in prison are listening as they sing and pray. And there's an earthquake, the doors fly open, but nobody goes anywhere. The jailer recognizes the power of Jesus and falls down asking how he might be saved. Paul and Silas tell the jailer and his family about Jesus. They believe and they're baptized and they invite Paul and Silas to their home for dinner and they rejoice. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like a landowner who invites people to work in his vineyard early in the day and promises to pay the usual daily wage, and they agree, and as the day goes on, the landowner continues to invite people to do the work in the vineyard. And at the end of the day, they all get the usual daily wage, enough to buy a large loaf of bread for a family. The landowner, Jesus says, is like the kingdom of God, offering work to all who will accept it. Throughout the day, everyone who accepts the work, who tends the vineyard, everyone who serves the Lord receives the reward. Everyone who does the work of the kingdom, whether they accept Jesus as Lord early in their life or at the last minute, everyone receives salvation. There's no hierarchy. The workers who worked all day grumble because they got the same thing as the ones who only worked for an hour. But the landowner reminds them that they agreed to their reward when they started. And he's generous. And everyone who ignored the opportunity lost the reward. What do we see when we consider this image of the kingdom of God presented by Jesus and the incident with Paul, Silas, and the jailer? What do we see when we look at these images and compare them to life as we know it today. Well, first, I have heard people grumble in the same way that the people in both readings grumble. Some fail to recognize the gift of salvation altogether. They grumble that they're exhausted from work and just want to rest on Sunday morning. They haven't experienced the joy of knowing that they are loved and forgiven by a generous God, so they don't see the point of worshiping, especially on a day like today. They think it's all empty ritual because they feel nothing. They don't love God. They don't feel any gratitude for the life they've been given. Others have accepted the work of the kingdom, but think of their call and the mission in a very earthly way. 
They think that they're earning their salvation through the work that they do. They don't understand that they're saved because they're loved. Simply because they love God and God loves them. People who think of salvation and kingdom work in transactional terms don't think it's fair or even possible for a person who has ignored God and lived selfishly to repent and be saved in the final hours of their life. Their earthly sense of transaction and hierarchy dictates that a greater salvation is due to those who labor longer and harder. In fact, folks who are stuck in this kind of mindset have a hard time welcoming new people into the congregation. They often create hierarchies within the congregation, holding on to the tasks that they consider more valuable and only allowing newcomers to do tasks they think are beneath them. But that's not what Jesus teaches us. Jesus does not teach that way of living. Jesus teaches love and generosity. There's work for everyone. God is generous and abounding in love for God's children, and the gift of salvation is given equally to all all who accept the invitation. And from that point forward, people who live with hearts filled with love for God and their neighbors and a true desire to abide by God's law are saved. There is a lot of hierarchy in our world. Is it possible to find a place where everyone who's willing to work receives a daily wage, enough to live on. A lot of people work two or three jobs to get by these days. Are there places where pay is spread evenly, providing enough for everyone? 45 years ago, two guys started an ice cream company. Maybe you've heard this story before. They made a pact with their employees that from top to bottom, the pay ratio between the highest salaried executives with the most responsibility and the lowest earning worker would never be greater than five to one. To their credit, they kept their promise for 16 years. But when it was time for them to retire, they could not find a buyer willing to accept that system. Every buyer insisted that the CEO would get a lot more than five times what the lowest worker got. That company is Ben and Jerry's. The five to one rule is no longer in effect, but it was. Last year, the annual executive pay watch report, which tracks CEO to worker pay ratios, revealed that S&P 500 CEOs averaged 324 times the average worker's pay. So if the average worker received a daily wage, enough to live on, the CEOs received enough on their first day of work to live for 10 months. A huge disparity. Is that okay? If you're not sure, reread the story of Lazarus, the beggar in Luke 16, beginning at verse 19. And remember, Jesus said, in the kingdom, the first will be last, and the last will be first.
our response to the word is, as the sun doth daily rise, number 675 in your hymnal. Lord, we confess our day-to-day -day failure to be truly human. Lord, we confess you. Lord, we confess that we often fail to love with all we have and are, often because we do not fully understand what loving means, often because we're afraid of risking ourselves. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other and we erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that by silence and ill-considered word, we have we built up walls of prejudice. Lord, we confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have we left left generosity and left little time for others. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us listen to your word of forgiveness, for we are very deaf. Come, fill this moment and free us from sin. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now let's share our concerns and celebrations and lift them to the Lord. Does anybody have a prayer request this morning or a joy to share? Bob. I'm Mary Ellsworth who lives up um, Avery Station Road. She's our oldest um, living member, and she had a uh, visit to the hospital this week for an enlarged heart. Hmm. So just prayers for her. She's home and doing well on the way to visit her after church today. About 
How old is Mary Bob? 91, I believe. 91. Well. My grandmother signed her cradle roll. Your grandmother what? Signed her cradle roll. Oh, wow. Which she proudly portrays in her bedroom. Oh, really? Oh, so Mary went to the hospital. Let's pray for her. But she's home now, you said. Thank you for visiting. Others? Uh, James Wortman, who worked for Willamette Township, had passed away this week. What's the last name, Jeff? Workman. Workman? W -E -R -T -M -A -N. Say again? Workman. B-R-T-M-A-N. B-R-T-M-A-N. Okay. Thanks. There have been a lot of um, prayers for families of people who passed away in the past week or two. An announcement. Next Saturday morning at the courthouse grounds, they're going to have a um, celebration of recovery. Ah. So if you know of anyone that's um, in need of hearing some positive endorsement, I would encourage you to invite them to come up. Yeah. Starting 10 o'clock. At the courthouse? Yes, I, um, I posted a few things downstairs um, that Joe Peters, the DA, shared with the ministerium this past week. They're up on the, the board. Um, it's a program that he is sponsoring, that he sponsored and is promoting to make people aware of it, um, where people with substance use disorder, as the medical community calls it, um, can seek treatment rather than going to jail. So it sounds like a great program. And he, he emphasized to us that if you see a person in need um, who you know is struggling with um, drugs or alcohol, you can anonymously, anonymous, bleh, anonymously call the program and let them know. And, um, personally, I would uh, promote speaking to the person first to find out where they are, see if they're ready. It is a struggle for a lot of people. So, um, Bob said, celebration of recovery at the courthouse next Saturday. Others. I am celebrating that I'm almost at the end of my job list for my daughter's wedding. <laughs> there are a lot of jobs if you're having a big wedding. <laughs> and um, it stresses me out because I'm afraid I'm going to lose one forget to do something so we're getting closer and the jobs are getting done that celebration will be in less than two weeks and um, you all will be enjoying Lady Sunday on the 8th in my absence so um, I will be thinking of you and praying for successful worship experience as I know it will be. It always is. Anybody else? Uh, there are a, quite a few new names on the prayer list. Um, I added Sandra Talcott who is Gladys Anderson's daughter-in-law. I visited Gladys this week. She met me at the dinner and so I asked if she'd like a visit and since she had met me she said yes. I'd asked before, but she didn't know who I was, so. We're not going to say anything. Sandy um, was living in Florida. Her husband passed away six That's years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, something happened in the spring. They don't know what. And she is having uh, confusion, difficulty speaking. Hmm. She's in Danville. So please pray for her. Um, 
Gladys, Gladys seems to be, you know, we had a good talk, we had a good conversation. Her, her impression is that they don't know what's going on. It sounded to me like a stroke, like a stroke, probably. But I'm not a real doctor. I just play one on television. <laughs> her sister is married to Jim Mislav, the rich on Chappelle. Okay. So I'll call her and find out. Yeah, I mean, so p do pay, pay, pray for her. And um, pray for Gladys. She, she talked about how she was often the caregiver for various relatives, you know, when things happen. And it's hard for her that she can't take care of people now at her age. So, um, lovely lady. Anything else? Okay. Any news on Ethan? No, not nothing. That no one knows anything. Well, that means hopefully the future, there's potential for the future. The story isn't over, and that's good. When the story isn't over, there's still time. Alrighty. Um, let's pray. Lord, we come to you on this dreary, rainy day with light in our hearts, the vision of the kingdom, your kingdom, in our minds. We can see this place where everyone has enough, where everyone is cared for, everyone is loved. Those with an abundance share so that no one goes hungry. It is a joyful image of love and care. We know that on this earth, there are many who have a lot and do not share. We raise them up to you this morning, Lord, that you might soften their hearts to recognize those in need and to offer help, offer assistance, when they can. And we pray for all those who are on our prayer list, Lord. So many people who have lost loved ones, including just recently the family of James Wortman. We pray for those whose family members are sick and for those who are sick that they may find care Especially this morning, Lord, we pray for Mary and Sandy. We pray for those who are suffering from sicknesses of the mind and heart. Those who turn to self-medication. And we celebrate those who have been able to find recovery. We ask that you be with them and those putting together the program for next Saturday, that more people understand that there is the possibility of a brighter future, that hope is alive, and that there are those who will support them in their efforts to recover. We thank you, Lord, for all of your attention to those in need. And especially we thank you for salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we bring forward our offering to God. so that others may hear your call, so that others may follow the way of salvation. To God be the glory. Amen. Our closing hymn is Seek the Lord, and if it keeps pouring, we, we might want to just keep singing until the rain slows down, although there's no sign of that. I don't know.
And may the blessing of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit surround you and sustain you each and every day. Amen.